Did she turn it off? She did. Okay. Because it was coming back some more. Okay. Hallelujah. Good. I'm excited. Yeah, we have to shake off a little things in the morning. Amen. Get us started. Hallelujah. God is so good. We have a lot to shout about. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody know this song. So sing it with us, okay? Let's just rejoice in God this morning. Come on, everybody. He's been good. Yes. Yes. Anointing. Anointing.
We don't want to take for us in order to see the miracle. We have to be willing to step by faith. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, I'm not going to stand by the banks when the Lord said to step out. I'm going to step out while the water is hot. I'm not looking for things to abate. I'm going to walk in and listen to stand out. Where you're at right now, God is saying, step in. Wade in the water. In the name of Jesus. God says, wade in the water. I don't, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. But he says, step into the deep. Glory to God. Step into the deep. The Holy Ghost is calling you. The Holy Ghost is calling you. Step into that place now. In Jesus' name. Woo! Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Amen. Yes, Glory to God. 
you know, it, it, can I just use you and just point your finger at sister? Because y'all know everybody points your finger at sister Terry. It's, you know, sister Terry's one of those. She likes to be quiet. She she'd be like the church mouse, as they call. It. You know what? Glory to God. I don't want to make a sound. Glory to God. Can I tell you, the Holy Ghost and the boldness of the Holy Ghost is going to cause some of you that don't want to move start moving. And we're waiting, folks. You got to understand, we're waiting on you to move because you got something that nobody else has. Ooh. Glory to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to God. Now, now I can't call you a lazy prophetess now. Glory to God. Woo. God is moving. God is moving by His Spirit. Tell somebody I'm ready to be used. My God, my God. Everybody say I want to be used, but they want to get up front to be used. Glory to God. It don't make a difference where you at. Just let Him use you. Amen. Stir it up, Father. Stir it up. Stir it up. To stir up the gift within me. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory now. Use me for your glory. Tell the Lord to use you. I see prophetic people that haven't given a word in age. Somebody standing next to them. God says, speak an encouraging word, but I'm not sure about what's on the inside. I'm not sure. Somebody got to activate. So you've been called to do different things. God's calling you. Say, so what has this got to do with healing in all areas? Glory to God. Healing in all areas. Somebody praise in this world. Somebody praise in this world. I didn't come to church. I didn't come to church because we are the church. But I didn't come to sit. Glory to God. Now, now, you say, well, wait a minute. You didn't come to sit. Well, yeah, I got my chair. It's going to help me do certain things. But I didn't come. I came to see something. Pastor that summer, I came to be a part of something. I came because the Spirit of God would have me to come. Someone said, you came because you're, you're the apostle. You came because you're, you're a pastor. No, I came because the Holy Ghost said, I've got something. The Holy Ghost said, I want to urge my people to come together. You know, can I tell it like this? You know, when you've gone all week long, and in the course of your week, you know, you ever drive your car and in the course of the week you find that you get low on fuel? <laughs> Help me hold a dose. And I don't know about you, but you know, I like to share, share this because I'm not one of those guys that like to shop when I get low on fuel. I don't like to wait till I'm at the last point. You know what I'm saying? When the gas light come on, that's not the time to be saying, let me see which one I'm going to. Amen. Amen. Right. Woo! The Holy Ghost has appointed us to be here, but if we come in here, it's got to be for a purpose. Oh, yeah. And nothing else, somebody say, I'm going to be refueled. I'm going to be refueled. I'm going to be refreshed. I'm going to be restored. Y'all didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Yes, Lord, you know. thank you, Lord. I'm coming for something. Help me, Holy Ghost. And I will stay awake late nights. That's the dumb. I'm not just, let me say, say it like this here. Folks say, man, you, how long do you study? Well, as long as the Holy Ghost wants me to. He all week long, he keeps bringing forth some. And let me tell you, I'm not spending them hours just to make you happy. All right, all right. Come on now. Pastor Banks, let me tell you, so the Holy Ghost will be talking to me and he'll be dealing with me. And I say, glory to God, whatever I'm feasting on, I get to feed you. Come on. Amen. 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 Tell somebody he's going to take us higher. Take Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't want to go. <laughs> but I want to give you this good news. You going anyway? <laughs> Woo! We can be honest for a second. Sometimes we say, "Yes, God. Whatever. Yes, Lord. Whatever you desire, whatever you want of me, I'm willing to do." That sound like you? God, whatever you desire of me, I'm willing to do as long as it's not hard. Hello, <laughs> Rick. Yeah. Sound like us at moments, it's not difficult, Lord, I'm ready to go. And you know, it's, it's funny because I don't know about you, but I, I, I've heard it so many times. Folks want to go all over the world. Father, I'm ready to go to the nations. I want to go across the waters. I want to go across the sea. And the Holy Ghost said, I just need you to go next door. <laughs> so if my neighbor next door, they're a problem, Father. <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you this morning. The Holy Ghost is calling us to deeper places. I thought, someone say, I thought. I thought. 
See, because I've been, I've been one of those, I, I, I think I know stuff, and every time I, I find out, I don't know what I thought of. Glory to God. It was my intent today, and I guess we'll, we'll get to get some of this. I thought I was going to be able to be finished with talking about Abraham and talking about trust, but the Holy Ghost just, he has been giving me some things, and I'm going to tell you, the more I look at it, the more I realize I can't get out where I thought I was going to get out. I, I, I was sharing with you the sense of talking about, see, because God's been dealing, tell somebody, God's dealing with me with trust. Uh, Pastor Banks, can I tell you like this? There's different, um, as I told you, told, share with everybody, there is the sense of duality in this word trust. And God brings forth that you would understand. When we talk about trust, not only is the place where we're saying, God, I, I trust you. You know, but God says, if you trust me, then you must entrust me. And the thing about God is that he entrusts us because he trusts us. And when I talked that thing, I said, that the Holy Ghost began to show me. He says, now, as, as you, you trust me, if you're saying you trust me, you must entrust me. But what I entrust God with? What can I give to God, Pastor Donald? He says, I want you to give me your aspirations, your desires, your goals, your dreams. Can I tell you, this, this sounds so simple, simplistic on the surface, but the Holy Ghost began to speak to me the other day. He said, listen, he said, I need you to share with my people. Some of the individuals are going through a place because of their age, because of the time of the season of their lives. They're going to a place that now their health seems like it's in jeopardy. And in that place... And even in that place where the body seems like it's failing them, I'm calling them to a place that if they say they trust me, they must entrust me. Amen. Amen. He said, well, God, what do you mean by that? He said, many people are in that place that, you know, you, when you get to a certain age, you know, when you're young like Gabriel, man, the only thing you think is about the next toy, the next time you eat, the next playmate. Glory to God. When you're young, that's the thing you're just thinking about just in the moment. And, and then, then you get to another place when you start dreaming about getting married and, and about having a house and having different things and having, you know what I'm saying, having a family. But then you get to another point. And when you reach that other point, it's like, you know what, all that stuff is behind me. Now I'm, whoo. Help me, Holy Ghost. You, if you haven't got there yet, you know, it's, it's kind of like this. You can look at it from another perspective. When you're young, you can fall down. Glory to God. You can fall down. You get back up. You bounce back up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. Pastor Dama, just sing like you hit the ground and you come up. Just, just come up smiling. Well, you might want a little attention, so you might cry a little bit. But all it takes is a little hug, a little kiss. And glory to God, let me kiss that. You, you back on your feet. You ready to go. But let us fall down now. Glory to well. God. We don't bounce back. Somebody asked me just not long ago. They said, listen, when you were younger, could you dunk the ball? I said, yes, I probably still can. They said, you, you can. I said, uh, but you'll never see it. They said, well, why not? I said, I'm not afraid of going up. I'm afraid of coming down. <laughs> see, see, the gravity, the thing about gravity, you can go up. Lord God, I might still be able to get up there. But Pastor Wayne, this is the coming down part now. It's like, hey, listen, my ankles aren't as strong as they used to be. I don't move like I, I'm just not sure-footed like I once was. And I found out now when I get hurt, it lasts a little longer. <laughs> Pastor Thelma, I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I can't, you know, I, I, I want something real hard. I, I can't ask my wife to kiss it. It don't feel better with that. Say, you better get some of that, get some of that other stuff and put on there. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Ghost. But listen. The Lord showed me, he said, we're reaching different times, we're in different places, and we're in different seasons. And so even in the element of trust, God says, you're going through different places. Now, when Abram, y'all remember Abraham? Abram, when Abram was in this place with God, before he gets to the place where he's able to take his only son, you know, that, that in itself, when you hear the Lord say his only son, that's actually a play on words. It's not a play on words, but when you understand what's taking place in the word of God, when God says his only son, he says my unique son, my son that's different, my special son. When he says, when he says regarding that son that Abram had, you remember before Abram had to take and God spoke, but he already had another son. I remember the other son, that, that other son he had from Hagar. In it, he still had another child. 
And so the Lord said, your only son. But when God said his only son, he was saying the unique one, the one that's different, yeah. the one that yeah. I made the promise concerning. Yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all better grab hold of this because some of you need yeah. to understand. You're unique. You're, you're special. God has called you forth. And there's something that's different from you. Even though there's other sons, it's not like you. God spoke that word regarding him. He was saying, listen, this one is unique. When he said, he's the only God, he's the only one that I've added this promise to. Y'all in the right house? Tell somebody God spoke some things concerning me. He may not have said the same thing concerning you. See, folks are mad because when God speaks that thing concerning you, they're looking at it as though it's supposed to include them. Not everything God gives includes you. Okay, leave that alone. I gotta get here now. Now y'all gotta calm down. Glory to God. Tell somebody you gotta calm down. Help me, Holy Ghost. Pastor Ron, where you at? Where you at? We got to look sophisticated. I need you. Glory to God. Pastor Ron helps me stay in order. Pastor Ron, you know, you know, if, if anything, he says I throw him under the bus. So, so he's the way I get out of trouble. <laughs> Pastor Ron, if I've been acting up this morning, it's because of Pastor Ron. <laughs> Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. Listen. Listen. I need to just, just kind of get you in a mode because we've got to slow down for a second because... I, I'm telling you, God wants you to get something, and some of you are in different places, but you understand. Tell somebody, God's going to cause you to trust Him at another dimension. God's going to cause you to trust Him in another realm. And so He's taking you places that you've never been before. Y'all, I didn't hear that. What that entails, what that entails, that's why I was telling you before, you got to understand this so that you can grasp this. This is where God is saying, because I trust you, you must entrust me. Now, see, you may have been able to entrust, see, y'all don't get it. You may have been able to entrust God with your finances. Glory to God. Most folks still have a problem with God. I don't know if you can handle that. See, when it comes to money, some of you still, you won't entrust God with your finances. Come on now, Jesus. I guess I'm just supposed to speak about Abraham. Y'all go to Genesis chapter 22 because they don't want me to talk about that personal stuff. That's the problem. Because, see, there's layers. If you understand, there's layers. God, tell somebody, God is processing you. In the process of God processing you, there is purpose. And even though you don't understand the purpose, there's a process to the purpose. The, part, the purpose really comes to that place where God is saying, I have a design or designated place that I'm taking you to. We'll purpose in our heart to do something. It's like I'm willing, I'm destined to do this. I have destined myself to follow through. And then God says, now listen, there's purpose, but there's a process to your purpose. Mm. And so if you go back and you, you know, I, I just got to do it like this. Abram had to go through the process. He didn't know that God was going to give him a son. You see, now listen, listen let, let, let's just, just mess everything up because I want to do this. See, you, you look at your lives and you think you got it all mapped out. Come on, somebody, say amen. amen. You mapped out your life a whole long time ago. You said what you wanted to do, how you were going to do it. What, you know, some of us even told yourself by the time you were 29. Glory to God. And see, you're just a few days from it, Sister Marcia. But, but still, in the course of it, you got to understand, even though you mapped it out somehow, some way, it's just not right where you thought it would be. I know, sister, she, she just did 29, so that's another story. But listen, you may be right on the number, you may be right on the mark, but still there's some things that you're saying, uh, it's not coming like I thought it was. Well. Abram is interesting in this regard because God has processing him in a place called trust. Now we can say faith and trust. God had to get him this in order for you to have faith in something, you got to trust and so God's bringing him in this place to understand. God speaks to him and tells him long ago, listen, I want you to leave your father, your mother, your kinfolks. Leave your countrymen. Y'all don't hear this. Come on now. Listen, it's a matter of what God is saying to him. Listen, if you, if you trust me, I want you to entrust me that I'm going to be your father. I'm going to be your... Y'all not been there. Amen. He says, I, I want you to trust me where I'm going to be your father. I'm going to be your mother. I'm going to be your, your family. Yes, yes. you got to trust. It's a process. 
When he was telling Abram, I want you to leave, he was telling him to leave. I want to do something in you. It's a process. But Abram doesn't understand the process because he can't see the purpose in everything that God is saying. When God tells you, that, I just want you to go, and he gives you the direction to go, but he's not telling you where you're going. That's, that's kind of, we can relate only in this regard. Pastor Debbie would relate like this. The minute we get in the car and you say, I'm taking you somewhere, the first thing out of my mouth is where we're going. Right. And then like the children, the first, you know, the next thing is how, how, how much longer? When are we going to make it? Are we, are we there? Are we close? Can you imagine what it's like that God is speaking to you? He says, I want you to step out of that place, but, but you don't understand the purpose. Why? He started out with Abram process and purpose. I have designed and designated you to understand. You're getting ready to step out. The first thing you got to step out because there's a purpose long that's that, that, that long before you get here. I, I have something that I'm going to do. It's years ahead of you. If he'd have told him that, listen, I'm going to get you a son at that point. And when you have a son, you're going to be past the year, the, the time of childbearing. He said, if he'd have told him all that, everyone would have said, what you talking about, God? He would not have listened to this. He, he would have had difficulty. Some of you are in a process of trusting God. There's layers and layers where God is processing you and for different things in your life to give back or entrust him with. <sighs> Can we just do it overnight, God? God, I just, you know, when you first accepted Christ as personal Savior, Pastor Wayne, you probably told him, look, God, I give you everything. Lord, it's all yours. But then there's some things that you found that after a while you had to give back. You just kept going. Anybody find yourself going back to some things that you gave it up? Amen. Woo! I, I, I found out some of us, even in terms of our communication, we keep going back to what we learned a long time ago. I said, I want you to let that go. But we keep going back in the use. Okay. Come on, man. Amen. I just want to get it. Abram. Abram, because I got to stay on course, y'all. Abram has to go through a process, and yet he doesn't understand purpose. God has designed and designated a place where He's taking you, but in the purpose of, in the process of taking you, there's things tell tell somebody I don't get privy to all information. That sounds like fun. Glory to God. Come on, that sounds like fun. You, you you know how inquisitive most of you are. Is anybody here inquisitive? You know how hard it is to surprise anybody? Nobody here, nobody here has that problem? Glory to God. Just, listen, I got something for you. You're just going to have to wait. I'm taking you to it. Where are we going? Where are we going? How soon are we going to get there? What is it? What is it? Is it big? Is it small? What does it look like? <laughs> you know, God is, is, is literally trying to take us. By faith, there's a process, and we don't understand everything God is doing. But because God says, listen, when you entrust me, first of all, in this layer of trust, he says, I must get you to a place that you're going to understand that I'm sovereign. And I can do what I want, when I want, how I want. Well, wait a minute. That's a whole other layer. God, now wait a minute. I'm not used to giving up control. Anybody here like to give up? Anybody here like to be in control? Glory to God. I, I, I'm talking to the wrong house. Glory to God. Ain't nobody here wants to be in control. Glory to God. Help me. Glory to God. Sister Marcia, I see you. I see you. I see you. Like an auctioneer, I can see you. Glory to God. I can see you. Glory to God. Woo. That's dumb. If I start going around the room like an auctioneer, I can begin to see him. I see you. I see you. Uh -huh. Read the uh -huh. uh -huh. Because what happens when we talk about the thing about trusting God means losing control or giving up the control. Can I be real? But most of us, we are shot callers. God, you don't get to call this one. I got it. I got it. I got it. Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. And God says, in this process, because of the purpose, I have to get you to let go. Tell somebody, I don't want to let go. See, see, when I said that earlier, y'all looked at me, no, I ain't saying that, I ain't saying that. But you say it to God all the time, you just say it differently. Pastor Nina, you ever told God no? You ever, you, she said, <laughs> she put her head down. Have you ever told God no? Not today. 
Glory to God. Have you ever told the Lord, just wait just a little while longer? God, it'll be wrong. I'm coming, but not right now. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. You know what it was like when you told your parents? Huh, Sister Stephanie? You know what it was like when you ever told your dad? Uh, uh, I'm going to get to it when I feel like it. Help me, Holy Ghost. I can see something raising in the Spirit. You, you know what I'm saying? You know what it's like, but the way we handle things with the Father. Now, now Abram is going through this process, and he doesn't understand process. He doesn't understand God has a purpose. Can I tell you, God has taken away layers of each of you to bring them to a place to trust. They don't know when I talk about your goals, your aspirations, your desires. It sounds like a bunch of words. Yeah, God, God, you got it. But the truth is, some of your desires, some of your aspirations, and some of your goals, God has some of them. But the Father wants everything. He wants your whole heart. But it's going to take a process to get to it. Amen. Ooh. Some folks have difficulty trusting because of other people have let them down. So it's difficult for them to trust. But God wants you to trust in Him. Yes. Now, if you say, I trust Him, I trust you, I trust you, God, with my whole heart, I trust you. He says, that, then give me, entrust me. And so he began to deal with, with Abram long ago. He said, if you trust me, then you must entrust me. Now, when I look, here's another way of understanding entrusting. When you entrust God, you then begin to obey God. <laughs> tell somebody I will obey. You know, Pastor Thelma, I'm going to tell you, I can talk to you. You know, it, it, it seems like, you know, uh, with all the weddings that I've done, it, it seems so funny because... We used to have obey, and so many of the ladies tell me, I, 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 I won't take that out. We <laughs> man, man I, they say, you know, and, and I understand it because so, so many men have misunderstand or misunderstood the word submit to the point that they don't understand there's a duality in submission. There's a part you play, there's a part she plays, and then there's a part we play together. And you can't submit to somebody that doesn't understand the duality of it. Amen. So, but but they don't, nobody wants to obey. You know, Brother Dante, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Everybody just, just that's, that's like, let's take that out. Ain't nobody obeying nobody. Ain't nobody listening. Because see, everybody wants control. Whew, help me hold a bunch. I gotta calm down. See, Pastor, you, see, you, you gotta help me so we can fully teach and you gotta be trying to. Like, that's why I'm going to be sitting so I can talk. Glory to God. So does this make sense to anybody here? Yes. So anybody here know that you like to be in control? No, Pastor Banks, I know this doesn't apply to you. Glory to God. I know this wouldn't apply to you. Glory to God. But does anybody here like to be in control? Is that a... That's a slow nod. Is that, is that a yes, Dante? You like to be in control? You got a shot caller, a little smooth shot caller with your house, though. You got two or three of them, like little Devin, she's a shot caller, glory to God. Little Devin's a shot caller, your, your wife is a shot caller. <laughs> you just got to be smooth with this. One accord, one accord, one accord. Listen, here's the thing, here's the thing. Nobody wants to let go, nobody wants to let go of control, but if you're really willing to go, tell somebody the next, the next place where God is taking you, I must obey you. Anybody want to go? You keep saying, I want to go further. I want to go deeper. But the only way you're going to go deeper is you got to let go of your hope. Now I'm trying to, I messed up already. I want to go deeper. Tell somebody I want to go deeper. Let go. Somebody say, let go. Tell somebody, let go. So Abram's in this mode where God is doing him through process. Through the process. God is taking him and taking him. Can I tell him like layers? He's taking away layers of hurt, pain, misunderstanding, misgivings, miscommunication. Because it's not with God, it's with the other people. All these other people that have caused you to be in a place where it's hard for you to lose control. I'm talking to somebody. All these places where it's hard to trust somebody. God said, in order for you to trust me, you have to entrust me. How can I entrust you when I don't trust anybody? In fact, you know what? Because of the, what the way things people have done over the years, it's hard for me to even trust my own voice. 
it's hard for me to trust myself. It's layers and layers, but God is saying, it's, it's in these places, I'm getting ready, can I tell somebody for the purpose where I'm taking it? Man, you haven't got to the place. You know, I look at some of those leaders. See, see any leaders in the house? Let me see the leaders. Hands of leaders. Hands of leaders. If you're called as a leader, God is getting ready to take away a whole host of things because of where he's taking you. You know, God can't even speak to you and tell you to go before he, he begins to remove some of the things in you. Because where you at right now, where some of you are even at right now, it's like, God, I'm ready to go. But God said, no, not yet. It's not your time because there's still something in you. Can you tell somebody I'm still stubborn? Nobody said it. See, I told you stubborn. <laughs> Too stubborn to even admit it. Glory to God. See, see, what that stubborn comes with that stubbornness also comes along a sense of rebellion. With that rebellion comes your pride. With that pride comes your ego. Amen. And so all those things, God said, these are layers of things in order for you to trust me, you must entrust me with. But because you're so accustomed to doing it your way, nobody else can do it but you. Yeah, can you imagine that fast stone? No, nobody else can do it. You know, nobody can mow, can mow the lawn. Nobody can nobody can 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 water the grass. No, nobody can take the track. Nobody can do the job the way you do it. Because you do it so perfect. <laughs> Woo! You can't you can't be in charge of the finances because you done messed up back in nineteen. <laughs> you remember when you made that mistake? You remember how you did? Because they can't do it as good as you can, and nobody gets a chance. Can I tell you? God has to remove the things that are in you. Tell somebody my ego got me where I'm at. Ooh, my pride of keep you. Can I tell you, your pride to have you stumbling and falling, and you still won't ask for help. Ooh, you ever been in a place that something's too heavy for you, but you still gonna lift it? I'm determined to get it done, and know I need some help, but I'm gonna do it because I ain't asking them. You're stubborn. And ignorant at the same time. But that just means you just don't know. Somebody saying, he said, <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you, God's trying to remove the layers from you? Touch some neighbor and tell him, say, He's trying to get something out of you. You, you know, you can look, Pastor, you ever look at your neighbors? You know, you ever been to church and you said, hey, This word is for you. This is for you. This is for you. That's the thing I can look at you and say, you know, like this here. You know, just, just look at somebody and say, this one's for you. You know they need it. They need this. They need this. Ooh. I tell you, we know. We, you, since you got a shot caller, you know, you got a couple of them in your house. This word is for you. This word is for you. <laughs> you don't have to look right at them. Just look like you're looking past them. Maybe think, make them think that maybe you're thinking about yourself. This word is for you. This word. This is word. I seen y'all looking at one another. Y'all both of you need this word. This is <laughs> <laughs> my ego. I know I'm stubborn. I know I'm rebellious. But you know, the, the, the rebellion is just like witchcraft. God says it's got to go. I like calling shots. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. Not me, not me. I'm just talking. I'm just saying, I like calling shots. No, I don't. Let me tell you, I done learned, Pastor. You know, Pastor, I've learned that it's better to be in a position. Let somebody else call it. Amen. There you go. I don't mind following. I don't mind following. Right. Woo! Listen, listen. With Abram, because there is purpose, there is a process to the purpose. And God has to begin to move the different things that are in him to remove them to get into a place just to trust. Tell somebody, I need this, 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 I need this. Can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? You won't get it anyway, but I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> one of the things that happens that no one really wants to understand, do you know the reason why many of you have quit along the way? Many of people have given up. Many people have thrown in the towel because they got frustrated and anger, angry and disappointed. They were disillusioned and disturbed by what has transpired in their life because they wanted God to do it different than what he did. They were shot callers, and they couldn't call the shots. They didn't want to let go. They were still stubborn and in their own ego, and so they're mad at God because he didn't move the way he thought they should. Wow. Mm. God, why I have to go through? Why, why, why is it me? I'm always going through. It's a process because it's a purpose, and it's
this, these things must go to get you where I'm taking you. Tell somebody, he wants you to trust him. And, and the thing about it, say, God, I trust you. <laughs> but you find out you really don't. Not in that area. Maybe it's your health. You haven't got there yet. So God says, hey, this is a new area. You're ready to do something. I want to go. Anybody got that word where God said, I'm going to use you to heal individuals. I'm going to call you. See, the word is there. And he tells us all these things he's going to do. But sometimes he takes you down the path to see what it's like. He says, for the purpose that you can have the same understanding that someone else had. i got to call you to understand compassion. And for you to understand compassion, you have to have condition. And in order for you to have a condition, you've got to have some circumstances. You've got to have a situation so that you know what it's like for someone else. Some of you have never encountered a situation, but you're always telling people how it's supposed to go. <clears throat> purpose. There's a process to the purpose. So even though the word he gave you, you haven't arrived at the word. You just heard the word, but you don't understand how to walk in the word. You don't understand what it is to be in that place. You can't trust him in that place. Whew. Man, I can't understand him as the God who heals. I can't understand him as the Lord who heals unless
looks like the enemy lured you in. It looks like the enemy's got you. It looks like this is the end. But God said, this is the place where I'm getting ready to deliver you from another whole other place. I'm going to bring you to a whole other area where you're going to entrust me with some things that you couldn't before. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. Tell somebody I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to move. I don't get to stay in the same place. Listen, listen, listen. See, you gotta, you, again, I'm going to remind you that, that, that Pastor Ron's messing this word up because I was supposed to be in, in Genesis, glory to God. Woo! <laughs> and teach you just from Genesis and, and, and dealing with Hebrews, but we're all over the map. But, but I need to tell you because you need to understand. God says it's, it's your time, it's your season, but I'm going to get ready to do something more in you. I said, God, why, why, why are we stealing so much with this trust? It just seems like we keep going back to this area. He says, Son, he says, you need to understand. We've taken something out to take because of taking you somewhere else. You know, everybody just, you know, I, I, I watch it this hour, Pastor White. People are just, you know, uh, seem like they got saved yesterday and they're a pastor tomorrow. And then they move from the pastor into some, some other, and it's like, well, glory to God. They, that's the only, they don't even get a chance to get any experience. <laughs> Amen. And then they don't understand. They don't understand when they finally do hit those roads. You know, it's like you got the title, but you, you don't have the office. You, you, you got the office, but you don't have the mantle. And you can't understand how to walk in these places because you just you just name it and claim it. Oh, okay, leave it alone, glory to God. But there's a process. Tell somebody, God may be calling you, may be speaking that thing to you. But there's a process to going into it. You know, Minister Didi, we don't just get there overnight. Glory to God. And I want to tell you, God is accelerating the process. Yes, amen. For his purpose, he's accelerating the process. That means, that means on one hand, it's like someone said, glory to God, that's more good stuff coming. That means some of the other stuff you've got to deal with. Because every time this comes in, God says, I've got to show you how to stand in that place. Yes. This is so much fun, huh? Yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is fun, huh? Thank you. Ooh, tell somebody I gotta speak some things. I gotta call some things out. Listen, can I tell you this? Can I just deviate just for one second, but it'll bring you right back? Because I was asking the Lord. Anybody ever ask God something? Amen. And then you expect for God to respond. Come on now. Amen. Most of us ask God, but we 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 hope that God will, but we're not really looking for an answer. I asked last week, he ain't answered. I asked last month, still ain't answered. I'm still looking for direction. But now, now I asked the Father for something. I said, God, now, how do you, how do you, how am I supposed to deal with this? How am I supposed to go into this thing? And, you know, it was like five minutes went by and my phone got to ring. Glory to God. And on, on the other end of the phone, someone told me, said, you know what? I was praying to the Holy Ghost to tell you. God said, Said so God said, speak to those things and call them out. I said, no, wait a minute. That sounded like that something out there. God said, speak as though you're speaking to the wind. And he says, call things into place. Call things into position. Call those things according to what he said. And I said, no, no that don't even make sense. Why would we begin to speak into the atmosphere? Why would we begin to speak something? So, so I said, God, when are you going to give me an answer? So it's a direction for the thing that I need. Well, well about 15 minutes, I got another call. Someone said, listen. Man, I don't know what it is, but the Lord told me to tell you. God said, Pastor Dominic said, God said, call those things in the place. Amen. Well, after about the fourth call, <laughs> what that song, what that song in that movie you say, God's trying to tell me something. Right. Okay. Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. I started saying, well, Father, maybe you're trying to tell me something. He said, listen. The process that I got you going through, son, there's some things that now it does not look, but you must entrust it to me that even though you don't understand it, that by faith you'll move. Amen. I said, well, God, that doesn't make sense. He said, wait a minute. He said, you know, you know, you know get to the place. That, that can be real, Joe. I start, Sister Shanice, I start in that place sometimes with God. I, I be trying to rationalize with God. I try to educate God. <laughs> Now y'all saying, no, you know better than that. You do it all the time. You're just wrong and don't even know. Look, look back into your word. We ain't the first one of encounter. Glory to God. Brother said like this. He said, listen, God said, I'm going to destroy these cities. And he said, now listen, God. Perhaps 
He said, God told him there wasn't nobody there. He said, perhaps, God, you, you might want to change your mind. And if there were possibly 50 people in this place, would you still destroy it? He was reasoning with God. Come on, tell me you don't do the same thing. Yeah. Who help me, Holy Ghost. God still had to bring him to the place that he could see. Well, no, 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 listen. I was asking God. I said, now, God, listen. This doesn't make sense to me to be in a position. Now, I asked you. I asked you to give me some insight. Now, are these people? Are they not prophetic? Are they not yours? I don't want to. You, you, come on, come on. I thought you were, so I started saying, Lord, but well, maybe the devil trying to get me off. <laughs> you know, it's funny because the word of God says, I don't follow three, two or three witnesses. Let me step up. Let me know. But, you know, sometimes you still say, God, now listen, I need you to speak. Because he didn't speak the way I wanted him to, Sister Perry. I wanted God to just come on, give me the answer, Lord. Write it down. Maybe just make it right down. And it's got to have some miraculous. Y'all know what Here's what the Lord told me. He's what he told me. He said, now, he said, listen, he said, because you need to understand something that I'm doing. He said, I'm not telling you something that, that, that I have not done from the beginning. He said, remember when the worlds were formed? I said, no, no, Lord, uh, he, you know, he said, no, come on now. And he says, listen, how is the world formed with the word? The word, the word was spoken. And you go back in, in what's in, and funny, when you go back into Genesis, that's what God is doing. God just began to speak. He calls forth things and calls them a place. That's kind of different from what you and I, he said, I told you, now I'm calling you to walk into a place that you're going to walk by the Spirit. So every time we start to see changes because we start walking away from the Spirit of the Lord, says, now, God will tell you, say, hey, listen, I've given you the authority. Walk in the authority. And the authority that I've given you, speak this. Yes. Say this. Do this. Yes. So he said, hey, here's what I'm calling you to do. This may not be for you right now because he may give you some more instruction. He was telling me this. And he says, what he was saying is I want you to trust me. There's a whole other layer, a whole other level that I'm getting, a whole other sphere that I'm taking you to. In this place, I've got to get something out to get something in. I didn't understand this, but can I tell you this? The word tells you, touch your neighbor, tell them to be transformed. Now, how are you going to be transformed? Transformed. You know, I'm not talking about the transformers, but there is something about the transformer. It is something about those trucks that turn into something else. Glory to God. God says, I want you to transform. For he says, be ye transformed. But the way you're going to be transformed, the way you're going to be changed, the way this transfiguration is going to take place is going to happen by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Your way of thinking, there's something about how you think. There's yes. something about our thought process. There's something about the mental, how you say, aptitude that we have. God said it's got to change. Mm -hmm. He said, but it changes not according to what the world says. It not changes according to what anybody else says. It changes by my word. Come on. Yeah. Whew, I don't know if I'm talking to anybody yet. The depth that God will say, see, you don't understand the process because you can't see the purpose. But God says, because I'm taking you somewhere that's deeper and much further than you ever thought you would go, he said, it is imperative that you go through this place. So God, what are you trying to do? He says, in this layer that I want to get rid of, you're afraid to even speak because it makes no sense. Listen, anything that does not validate your mind, <coughs> he says, we got to take away your sense of your thinking. We got to change your patterns and your views. I got to take away your opinion. He said, "That's another thing you got to give to me." Amen. This helping anybody yet? Yes. It's the things God's getting ready to ask you to do. That by faith you got to move into it. And the way you move in it, the way you move is by obedience. But the only way you can obey is you got to get rid of it, even the way you think about it. God, I don't understand. Can I tell you this though, so you don't just be saying something and say he was way out there? I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when, when God sent Abram to take his son, remember his son, what's his son's name, y'all? So he's taking Isaac up to this place. Remember, he's taking him to this place. The thing you got to remember, Isaac's not a little kid. And the thing about Isaac is that God, God brings it forth. He says, listen, he got Isaac carrying the wood. Isaac is carrying the wood to the sacrifice. If you understand what's really transpiring, you're seeing the figure in terms of Christ. You're seeing the shadow of Jesus Christ carrying his cross up the hill. Yes. 
Here's the sheep that's being led to the slaughter. Here's Isaac going up. He's not no little bitty kid, Joe. Isaac's still wondering. Now listen, Daddy. And not only that, let me tell you something about Abram because there's a process in this thing that you have not even considered. God, when God told him, I want to take you, here's the mountain, here's the place I want you to go. God didn't just say you can go do the sacrifice in the backyard. He said, listen, where I'm sending you, there's a mountain I'm sending you to. That mountain is like 60 miles away. You've got a whole long time to be thinking about this process. This place where I'm sending you, where I'm taking you to take your child, the only one you got in this regard, the one that has the promise attached to it, that one that's unique, that one that's special, I'm calling you to go and sacrifice. Wow. Amen. You got 60 miles. Glory to God. This is not by car, y'all. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. Woo! That's how I had to stop and think about this say, You know what? Now, it's one thing. You, you know, sometimes all night long, all night long, sometimes all night long, I've been thinking over a situation. They had three nights to cover the 60 miles. Three, three long days and nights to cover 60 miles. Help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. They, they going across terrain that didn't have those cracks where you say if you step on it, you break. No, no, they didn't have the cracks and stuff. The sidewalk that you're familiar with. They didn't have the roads that were familiar. They had to go through some dusty places. They had to go through some dirty places. They had to go through some terrain that has not been charted. Amen. They got trails that they themselves are still having to go through. I don't know if this makes sense. And the whole time you're going, all you can think about is what God called you to do. You got plenty of time to turn around. You got plenty of time to turn back. You got plenty of time to quit. This making sense to anybody yet? Tell somebody it's a process. Because once I, can I just be real with you? I'm thinking about this. I, I, I know God has moved him. Can I tell you the process that God is doing in you for the purpose that he has already ordered? You see, you've got to remember, see, 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 what Abram, what he did, when he told him to start this process in that particular thing. Abram just, just, just didn't arrive at a place where God should say, listen, I want you to take the, the, the child of promise and take him to the hill and go ahead and take his life. Abram didn't arrive there in that place. He wasn't able to, to how you say, entrust God with those things. It was a process. Remember, Abram had fallen and failed in many places. Abram couldn't trust God. He, he took the point that God sent him in the places. When God sent him in, he said, listen, I'm not going to tell her everybody to share with my wife. Man, she's a beautiful woman. They need to kill me over this woman. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. You imagine that pastor Wayne, he's going to tell him, that's my sister. He didn't trust God. Okay, okay, okay. I'm too far back. Tell somebody there's layers. And in these layers, if I call them layers, it's like God is taking different things down in your life. Where are you at right now? She said, God, I, I thought I'd trust you. Well, you finding out you didn't. I, I love it because Job says, you know, he says, Job, Job was one of those guys that they, all he went through. It's in the end. Job said, I, God, I thought I knew you. But the process that you brought me through, through these things you talk, brought me through, he said, this is where I come to know you. Amen. What you saying? My conditions, my circumstances. God says, in these places, I'm doing something for the betterment of you. What is he called? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, this helped anybody? Amen. Oh, my God. I think I've been going too long. I think I've been. Oh, this helped. Man. Pastor, yes. come on. Let me, let me just kind of bring this one to a close. Because I, I, I thought we were going to close up on that. And this is good stuff. Up. Yes. God said, listen, the Holy Ghost is saying, I want to take you deeper. I haven't got to a place that I want to go, but I, I just uh, tell somebody I want to trust you. I want to trust you. Mm. Let's define something for you. There's, there's an area in you. There's an area. Tell somebody there's an area in you. Tell somebody there's an area in you. Now look at them. Look at them real good. Look at them. There's an area in you. We're not going to call anybody any names. Glory to God. I'm 
I don't call anybody shot callers. Glory to God. But there's an area in you where God's trying to gain access. There's an area in you that God says, I want you to surrender to me. Now, can we pause for a second? Somebody say pause. Pause. This is the place where you want to take a step. You say, God, you know, look at your season. Look at what you've been going through. Look at what's been happening in your life. And in this place, this may be the place, even though you feel displaced, even though you feel it's difficult, maybe you feel it's harsh or hard, in this place, the Holy Ghost is bringing you to a place that God wants you to entrust Him with whatever is in your life. You may have seemed like you've lost some things, fallen, you know, like Abram. You may have failed the test. But God said it's not over. Can, can I just tell you this? Because this is just free. Tell somebody this is free because you need to know this. Sometimes we think that when we miss God, when we fail God, sometimes we feel like we're not good enough. But you know, there, there's something that you got to look at. In the gene genealogy over in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 5, there's a Important little thing. It's a side note. It's a sidebar. You can kind of go back into the book of uh, excuse me, in the book of uh, Hebrews, and in the book of Hebrews, uh, there in the eleventh chapter, one of the things that's interesting to note is that when you talk about the Hall of Faith, there's a woman by the name of a a a Ahab. Excuse me. Um, there's a woman by the name of Rahab. Anybody familiar with Rahab? Amen. The reason why I say the sidebar in Matthew in the genealogy is that you you guys are familiar with this. This is nothing new, but I just want to throw something at you. Just so, so that you understand, God's not concerned about where you came from. He's not concerned about what you've been into. If you know Rahab, Rahab was a harlot. Better word would be prostitute for us in this day and time. But, but this prostitute was willing to trust God, and because she was willing to trust God, she's in the hall of faith. But what's interesting, the reason I said sidebar in the Matthew 1 5 is because you'll understand. Um, everybody remembers the story of, of, of Ruth. Glory to God. Amen. You remember who her, her uh, how do you say, her mother-in-law was? Uh, well, I want to tell you, uh, when she married a fellow by the name of Boaz, do you know that Boaz's mother is the same Rahab? God doesn't care where you came from. He doesn't care what you got into. He only cares what he's getting ready to do in your life. Just a sidebar. Stop thinking about the times that didn't come through. The things didn't fall through the way you did. Stop worrying about what didn't happen. God's about to do something that has never been done before. Amen. All he wants you to do is trust him. And in this lair, this new place of trusting him, it's about yielding. It's about giving up. It's about surrender. It's about letting go. God, what do you want me to let go? Whatever you're going through, there's a place that God is doing in you that no one else can understand. It's unique to you and where he's taking you. So God, I've been going through this for so long. This has been seemed like it's ongoing. God, what are you trying to get me to do in this place? Can I trust you in all things and in every place? Listen, listen. The psalmist, David, talks about, he says, even to this end, he says, though I be in, the, you know, talks about the shadow of death. Remember that? The shadow of death? You know, basically what he's saying, there's some things that look like it's over. It looks like it's the end. It looks like you're going to die, but you're not. God said, I want you to trust me in every place I take you. There's some things that I'm taking you into. There's some things, situations and circumstances you're facing right now. God said, this is the place now I'm dealing with you. Remember, remember before I end this today, I want to tell you, that in this context, at the end of this, we do understand that Abram comes to this place. But what he does, what he does do, when God tells him, hey, listen, look over in the thickets. I have a ram in the bush. <laughs> One of the things that's interesting to note, he says, and I shall call this place Jehovah Jireh. I will call this place. There's a whole lot for us to get to, and I'll be telling you about that later. But I want to tell you that the place that you're in right now, this place that you've come to, this very thing you're going through, God said you'll meet the circumstances, you've met the place. I brought you to this place. Now is the time. I'm getting ready to supply your need. I'm getting ready to move for you. I'm getting ready to do something that has not been done for you. But I need you to trust me. Woo. 
Tell somebody your act of obedience is getting ready to cause some things to happen by you be obeying God. It's going to cause the process to take you into purpose. Because you obey God, it's going to cause the process to begin to turn, to take you into purpose. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. Am I talking to anybody yet? Amen. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Didn't mean to be this long, folks. I apologize to you. Amen. But I want you to know that God says your purpose, your process has to do with the sense of where you're destined to do. The destination that God has in store. He says you have to go through these places. It is necessary for you and for I to surrender to God. Well, how do we surrender? It's now if we say we trust him, we must now entrust him. With our cares of our affairs, of our situation, this place that you were able to identify, God says, I want you to entrust it back to me. Someone say, listen, my finances, I'm entrusting to you right now, God. Woo! Now listen, the moment you entrust it to God, it looks like it's going to get worse. The moment you entrust it to God, it may be that some things are going to be required for, from you because this is the place you get ready to be tested. <laughs> my God, my God, my God. Listen, to everyone that's here, everyone that's here, you need to know God is saying it's the time, it's the season. I didn't need to be this long. But I need you to understand. Tell somebody we get ready to engage in a new perspective. We get ready to get engaged with another opinion. That's not mine. I'm getting ready to engage in a place, how I say it like this, where total surrender, God, whatever you want, whatever you desire, however you want to send it, whichever way you want to do, I don't care. Even if it takes my life, I'm going. So what does that entail? That means that no matter what, God's got it. If, it. if it takes my life, he can resurrect my life. Glory to God. But I'm willing to go wherever you want me to go. Father, I'm submitted. I'm committed. I'm in this place that, Lord, it's not about me anymore, but it's about you. If you're hearing this and know this, tell somebody, I know I need to make a decision in this area. This is just enough, one area. God's going to take you to a whole other place. When you get finished with this, tell somebody, he's not through causing you another, another dimension, another realm of trust. But you in this place, in this place, in this situation, in this circumstance, God says, I've got to get you to him to, to, how you say, to give me all of it, to let it go, to let me have my way. Mm -hmm. Woo, tell somebody, I'm not going to be the shot caller when I'm finished here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you're hearing this, if you're hearing this and you're receiving this and you're embracing this, I want you to come. I want you to move. I want you to move. Glory to God. I want you to move. I want you to get up from where you're at and come. And if you're just out there in the place and you're listening to us, just put your hand. Just put your extend your hand up. But I'm telling you, you got to move right now. This is the times that God wants us to move from the place that we've been because this, tell somebody, this word is for me. This word is for me. I don't know about anybody else, but this word is for me. Glory to God. I, I, I've been finding God. Every time I think I got it, he adds something else to me. Every time I think I know, it's like something else he's doing. God, just when I thought I had it, there's something new. Huh. Woo. My God, my God, my God. This makes sense to anybody but me. Glory to God. Man, I thought I was going to be finished with this. Mm -hmm. Woo. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Tell somebody this is for me. I am Glory to God. God said that's your time, that's your season. And someone said, well, I've been hearing that, I've been hearing that. But you know, can I tell you this? Sometimes, sometimes we have been looking when someone says it's my season, it's my time, and the thing I think about, everything going to fall in place. It may be the season for this particular thing. It may be the season for that thing. Now God says that you... And get you, as you give it to me, I'm ready to do something to you. He said that you let me have it. Glory to God. You know, can I just say it like this, Sister D? You ever be in that place? I remember, I remember Sister D used to be the biggest baby there ever was. Glory to God. She was spoiled. Glory to God. Just spoiled rotten. She, she don't like me to tell her. She probably still a little spoiled. Oh, he, he, wow. like, if anybody remember Baby Huey, that's Baby Huey. <laughs> Keep that big old baby. Glory to God. Like, Sister D, you're going to have to come over. you got to stand on your own two feet. She, she be still be like, you know, Pastor Wayne, she back in the day, she, she, here she was, bigger than, you know, bigger than all, all, everybody, and she still wanted somebody to care. Wanted Brother Daryl to come pick her up. Glory to God. No, girl, you got to use them legs. Tell me, Holy Ghost. Listen, 
I want to tell you, Amen, you not wanted to be in that place <laughs> where you didn't want to do, but God said it's your season, it's your time to move. And in it, you don't get to do the thing that you did before. God said, I'm calling you. This is the season for growth. This is the time for maturity. And in, in turn for it to transpire, you got to let go of a lot of it. Whatever your situation is, whatever that thing is that you've got, I want you to just, just tell God, I'm giving it to you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, my God, my God. Tell somebody it might be your health. It might be your home. It might be your finances. It might be your children. It might be your spouse. I don't know what it is, but God says, I want you to give it to me. That thing you've been worried about, that thing you've been concerned about, that place where you feel like you've fallen off, you failed, it didn't happen the way you wanted it to, God says, give it to me. This place, this time, this season, right now, God said, it's yours when you give it to me. So, Father, we come. We come right now for these people that are standing, the people that are here, the people that are in our listening audience, and we speak to that situation. Father, each individual, oh, glory to God, as they yield to you, as they yield to you, Father, I thank you that you're taking them. I take, thank you that you're going to move them. I thank you that you're going to cause them to surrender in a way that they couldn't have before. I know that we wanted to be in control. I know that we wanted to be the one to call the shots. But now, as we obey you, oh, God, I, will shout. I thank you that you're going to take us to a new place, that you're going to move us according to the Spirit of God. So, Mr. Phil, I can tell you like this. God said, literally, he said, literally, he said, just, just trust me, just hear me, just hear me. He said, daughter, you still hear my voice. And because you hear my voice, all I'm asking you to do is just listen to me. He said, literally, literally, she's not the only one, but God is saying, literally, just lock in on my voice. Lock in on what I'm saying. Trust me for what I'm saying. Don't look at yourself. Don't look at your situation. Don't even hear what your mind is saying concerning your condition. But God says, lock in on my voice. Lock in on my words. Speak what I'm saying to you. Glory to God. God said, literally, I said, Minister Marshall, it's like he said, literally, God says, speak back the word that I speak to you. Speak that word back to me. He says, speak that word to your condition. Speak that word into the atmosphere. Speak that word to everybody. You've been telling everybody else about what's going on in your life. But God says, speak only what I said. He said, lock in on my word. The Father says, right now, he says, what I'm saying to you, he says, you're healed in Jesus' name. I, I tell you, he says, he says, you're healed in Jesus' name. He said, lock in on the word. He said, it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what they're saying. Lock in on my word. Tell everyone around you, lock in, lock in, lock in, lock in. Oh, go shut up. Holy Ghost is saying, it's time here, here, and here, and here, and here. But you must obey. You must obey. Woo. Listen, some of you are going to experience, some of you are going to experience different the moment you, you not only the moment you hear the word, and the moment you start to walk out, you can recognize the things you change. And I said, it's changed for you. It's changed for you. Tell somebody it's changed for you. Just like you thought it was over, God said it's now a new beginning. Tell somebody it's a new beginning. Amen. You thought it was over, but God said this is a new beginning. This is a new season. This is a new day. It's a new time. Woo! Tell somebody I'm moving where I didn't even think I was going. Glory to God. So Father said, it's done. Tell somebody it's done. I was going to pray. The Holy Ghost said, to tell them it's done in Jesus' name. Tell somebody it's done in Jesus' name. I want to say to you, Lord, and listen to you. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for being with us. I pray that you are blessed. I, I pray that you hear and receive the word of God. And I want to tell you that the word works if you will work the word. Amen. To God be the glory. May God bless you. May God keep you in Jesus' name. Listen, folks. Glory to God. Glory to God.